and can I ask um, Megan Kao to talk to a higher presentation, please? Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm a PhD student from the lab of Ahna. Uh, our group designed and compared two drug delivery systems composed of only DNA optimus. One is called Nano Train. The quinine loading optimus were used as box cars and flanked with linkers so that they can be assembled together. The other one is Nano Flower, which is relatively larger and self assembled by the strategy of rolling circle reaction. The locomotive optimus can be connected or incorporated into nanotrain or nanoflower as the targeting moieties. Here, we firstly verified and characterized their formation, and the MM4 optimus keeps its second structure and the bending affinity to quinine after being assembled into nanotrain. We also found that nanoflowers possess higher drug loading ability than nanotrain due to their porous structure. We have checked the bending affinity for locomotive aptima to their uh, ta target protein PFLDH after being connected with the nanotrain. Altogether, these results show that nanotrains and nanoflowers can be generated to carry quinine with targeting ability. Their distinct sizes have different um, anti-malaria effect and the pharmacokinetics that will be assessed in the future work. Welcome to have a look at my poster and discuss with, with me during the break time. Thank you very much. And thank you very much as well. Our next speaker is Paul Coons. Uh, can I ask you to unmute and talk to your presentation, please? Can you hear me? Yep. That's fine. Okay, I'll get started. So um, I'm in my second year of my PhD at the University of Sheffield as part of the NGD group, and I'm working on the generation of SSDNA by denaturing HPLC for use in CELEX. Current methods for SSDNA generation leave a lot to be desired. With issues including four yields and contamination of the SSDNA with PCR byproducts. We're currently developing a denaturing HPLC facilitated by hydrophobic 5' modifications as a method for SSDNA regeneration. Our research objective is the development of this method as a viable alternative. We began by comparing the retention times of 80 base pair PCR products with various 5' modifications. 5' Texas Red gave a significant shift relative to the unmodified products in retention time. We hope that with the product denatured, the two strands, one lacking the Texas Red group, could be separated. Moving on to the denaturing HPLC. Initially, we were working with a non-random AT base template as this would allow for mass spec analysis of the resulting strands. As you can see, there is a significant difference in retention time between the labeled and non-labeled strand. Moving on to the elution. We then had to repeat, repeat this uh, with an amplified CELEX library. And as you might expect, the peak is broader due to the random region, but elution is still quite feasible. Purification. So the desalting is actually fairly trivial due to the fact that the iron pair reagent TEAA is quite volatile. So far, freeze drying has yielded the best results. Uh, purification yields of two micrograms and eight micrograms. And then conclusions. To conclude, rapid generation of SSDNA via this method is feasible with promising yields from initial purifications. The future work will include optimi optimization of the purification method, elimination of PCR byproducts, and of course, use in a CELEX protocol. Thank you very much, Paul. Next up is Jay Guzdek. Um, can I ask that you unmute and uh, talk to your poster, please? Joanna, I don't know if you're talking, but we can't actually hear you at the moment. We have had this issue in the past. Uh, Are you there? Yes, I'm there. Yeah. Can you Perfect. hear me now? Yes? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, so once again, hello everyone. My name is Joanna Guzdek and I am from Pure Biologics company from Poland. And today I would like to present our results. Our goal is to develop a novel aptamer based therapeutic medical device, which selectively bind and removes the C5 complement protein from Neasthenia gravis patient's plasma. To do so, uh, we use Pure Apta platform for selection process, resulting in the identification of 10 promising uh, chemically modified uh, DNA sequences. All of them demonstrated strong and specific binding capacity towards molecular target, the C5 protein. And moreover, eight aptamers also effectively bind to native C5 protein captured directly from the human plasma with a C5 specific uh, monoclonal antibody. Our results uh, were also confirmed by SPR technology measurements with KD values in the picomolar range. And just to sum up, uh, our results suggest uh, great potential of our aptamers in the implementation of a novel aptamer based therapeutic medical device for the treatment of uh, myasthenia gravis patients. And now the leading sequences will undergo uh, optimization process and then will be subjected to functional test. And thank you very much. And thank you very much. Next is Yannick Kurler. Uh, if you would like to unmute uh, yourself and talk to the poster. Yes, so um, hello and welcome to my flash talk. And my name is Yannick Keller. I'm a PhD student um, at Fraunhofer Institute for Cell Therapy and Immunology in Potsdam, Germany. So um, my topic is the development of an aptamer based uh, detection system for disease associated glycosylation patterns. So studies show that in the serum of uh, immunoglobulin G of patients with Olmatita treaters, there's an um, degalactosylation and desalylation of glycans called the G0 type. And this leads to autoimmunity and pro-inflammatory effects, which are associated with the disease. So um, this can be used as biomarkers for early diagnosis. So our aim is to develop an aptamer based um, glycan detection assay. Um, so we generate the aptamers against the glycans and try to establish a detection system with a fluorophore labeled adapter primers. So which will dissociate from the aptamer when the aptamer binds the target and there will be a hairpin structure and um, fluorescent signal. Uh, we try to, uh, to measure this with the electrophoretic mobility shift assay. So with a native gel where the um, aptamer and primer will have tries together and they will, because of the mass change will be a shift. Um, visible and also with aptamer and target, they have the same. When aptamer, primer and target will, um, uh, will incubate together, the primer should dissociate. And then there will be um, the shift back to the uh, original primer band, but in the gel uh, for different aptamers and primers, we uh, did not see this shift back. So we have to design and test further primers for that and alternative detection mechanisms. And in parallel, we continue with the generation of the aptamers with my classic Celex and the capture Celex. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is Tiasa Legan. Yeah, hey, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm part of an aptamer group from University of Bonn. In the past years, I was working on the establishment of um, a robotic assisted selection of RNA aptamers targeting small molecules. Um, so our selection approach was based on the capture select process where the libraries immobilized on the uh, matrix through uh, constant docking sequence. And we utilize this idea uh, for the selection of uh, RNA ALI type uh, sensors um, by designing the library in a way where the docking sequence is complementary to the part of the broccoli aptamer. Uh, so first we designed um, and tested several different libraries um, with different uh, complementary part uh, to the broccoli and also with different linkers and then we apply the best fit for the selection of RNA sensors um, for a model target time in pyrophosphate. 
And finally, we obtained two sensors with two-fold increase in the uh, fluorescence upon the target addition. And in future, we would like to test this app, uh, the sensor for the um, intracellular um, assays and also applied uh, other metabolites for the selection. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next up is Mariam Nakjavani. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Um, hi, everyone. I am an early career researcher from Deakin University in Australia. And this research is about drug delivery to brain, which is highly challenging due to the role of blood brain barrier. Blood brain barrier consists of several layers, including endothelial cells, basement membrane, parasites, and astrocytes. Our group previously developed Aptomer's specific for transferring receptor, which facilitates the delivery of drugs uh, to the brain via the receptor mediated transcytosis. In this research, we used mathematical modeling uh, to study the mechanisms involved in the mass transfer of Aptoma across the blood brain barrier. Barrier. We found that the uh, mechanism of mass transfer uh, in the blood brain barrier is a mixture of convection and diffusion, and in the brain, it is diffusion mainly. Uh, therefore, the main barrier for reaching drug uh, to the last layer of uh, neuron dendrites was the brain parenchyme domain. Uh, we also found that the, the thickness of endothelial cells, parasites, and astrocyte layers induced mass transfer resistance against dispersion of aptoma in the blood brain barrier, and basement membrane apparently had a very low effect. And finally, the velocity of blood considerably affected the concentration profile of the aptoma in patients with high blood pressure problems, the distribution of profile of the aptoma might be suppressed in the blood brain barrier and it's nice to be considered. Uh, our find findings are uh, to be used in further uh, dose adjustment modeling studies. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is M. Puchala, if you'd like to. Hear me? Yep, perfect. Hi, Magda. Hello, everyone. My name is Magda Puhawa, and I'm from Pure Biologics. And today I would like to present the results of enhancing aptamer resistance to nucleolytic degradation. Uh, the main objective of the research is to develop an aptamer based molecular filter for selective plasmapheresis to remove pathogenic autoantibodies from the blood of patients suffering from neuromyelitis optica disorder. The selected and optimized 28 nucleotide original aptamer containing a chlorobenzene modified nucleotide from pure apta platform has a very high affinity, but degradates too quickly, especially in rat serum to be functional during an apheresis procedure lasting several hours. Therefore, I introduced some additional chemical modifications combining protection of the free prime end by inverted thymidine and the introduction of internal modifications such as two prime ometal modified nucleotides. It turned out that the stability was not dependent on the amount, but it is the position of the modification that have an effect on increasing stability. As a result, I obtained an aptamer with an increased half-life from less than five hours to 65 hours in human serum and from one hour to over eight hours in animal serum while maintaining high affinity for the molecular target. Um, and I hope this allowed the aptamer to undergo preclinical studies in animal model. Thank you very much uh, for your attention and I encourage you to get familiar with my poster. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up is Alexei Tsimokivlo. Um, my apologies for my pronunciation of your surname. Um, Alexei, if you'd like to unmute and talk us through your poster. I can see, Alexi, that you're online. Um, 
please let me know through the chat if you're having any issues with um, unmuting. I'm not seeing any movement at the moment. So what I might do is move on to the next and then message Alexi to see if he is available to present. So our next presenter is Mirita Singh. Um, if you would like to unmute and talk through your poster. Hello. Hey. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Smriti Singh, a PhD scholar of MNIT Allahabad, uh, under the supervision of Dr. Seema Nara. Today, I'm here to present a small piece of my work, which is based on the in silico screening and validation of high affinity single standard DNA aptamer for Staphylococcus enterotoxin type A. Uh, the background of this study is basically based on to overcome the shortcomings of uh, conventional selects. Uh, which are like, uh, we lose lots of high affinity aptamers during the selects process and uh, time uh, time uh, time required uh, to perform the selects, including uh, the, lab uh, the labor required to perform the selects. So we, uh, we try to explore already available aptamers for enterotoxin to develop, uh, uh, to develop a assay uh, in the form of an assay to detect the SEA in food matrices. So uh, we go for an in, silico, uh, uh, in silico screening approaches and with the help of APTA informatics tools, we screen out of 10 aptamers which are reported for um, the entro food poisoning enterotoxins. Out of the 10, we screen three best aptamers and with the help of in silico screening uh, approaches, uh, these aptamers are screened on the basis of their secondary structure, their stability and their binding energy and their interaction with the target. So after the in silico screening, we performed the validation through the dot blot assay. And we found that uh, in our study, we found that uh, out of these three, uh, all uh, two are already report, uh, reported for Staphylococcus enterotoxin A, but one is reported for uh, an enterotoxin B. So uh, we are here, uh, we concluded with this work that we can explore the already available aptamers and we can explore the diagnostic potential to develop some uh, some on uh, point care diagnostic devices to detect these uh, toxin in the food matrices. Thank you. Thank you very much. And our next presenter is, I, my apologies, my screen is fairly low res at the moment. Um, okay, so hi everybody. Yep. Uh, I'm glad for the opportunity to give a flash talk here rather than a normal lecture because we came to introduce a selection approach that uh, which uh, main advantage is in the fact that it's pieced thing up rapidly. Uh, and we feel like too much talking might kill the impression. So uh, what uh, we were interested in is the fact uh, of limitations as, and possibilities of a selection done in a single round, rather than exploring uh, some new DNA motifs uh, or molecules which would be useful. Uh, so to make long story short, we succeeded uh, in a project uh, of uh, uh, the, an RNA cleaving deoxyribozyme, uh, where a th uh, through a single step of selection and next generation uh, uh, sequencing data, we are able to characterize several uh, motifs that worked. And also with the best motive we found, we were able, uh, based on this data analysis, uh, to identify secondary structure and also sequence requirements. And uh, after that, of course, we uh, validated these data uh, experimentally in the lab too. So, uh, and probably after all, we found, we probably found a novel say sequence or novel motive in it as well. So we kind of like the molecule and as an honor, we gave it a name Dvanatska, which is a checked word and it, it has a positive connotation. So uh, if you want to get some tips and tricks, how to do your selection fast, then just, you know, talk to us and we could give it to you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Thanks very much, Teresa. Um, our next presenter is Katerina Svevlova. Um, if you'd like to start talking about your presentation, your post presentation. I'm not seeing Katerina in the um, participants list. So I think we may be moving to the next presenter, who is Beatrix Torres Vasquez. Um, Beatrice, are you there? Hello, can you hear me well? Hey. Can we you? can indeed. Uh, hello, my name is Beatriz Torres. I'm a PhD student at Centro de Astrobiología in Madrid, Spain. And I'm going to talk about my poster in vitro selection of high affinity aptamers that detect hepatitis C virus core protein and inhibit virus production in cell cultures. We have selected RNA and DNA aptamers against six variants of HCV core protein, which is a highly conserved protein that forms the viral capsid. The obtained aptamer populations were analyzed by ultra deep sequencing and by informatic tools. Highly represented aptamers were characterized. And finally, we analyzed their applicability to viral diagnosis and therapy. The KD values uh, were in the nanomolar range, as low as uh, 0.4 nanomolar. Some high affinity aptamers were tested in competitive and sandwich biosensor SIs, reaching a detection limit of two picomolar. Uh, also, uh, the two most prevalent and high affinity aptamers decreased both the viral progeny titer and the level of extracellular viral RNA, making them good candidate molecules for the design of new therapeutic approaches for hepatitis C. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Our penultimate presentation is by Strenholm Tungakorib. Um, if you could. Yep. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Hello. Yep. Hey. Hello. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Siri Tan Tang Sirisap, and I'm from King Forensics. This project is in collaboration with the Department of Physics at King's College London. And we are currently working on the Aptima characterization and Aptima based biosensor design using molecular dynamics or MD simulations as a com complementary tool. So, here we use a novel DNA Aptima from the published literature raised against the receptor binding domain or RBD protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. We have used several conventional biophysical techniques, including SPR, ILONA, and CD, to characterize the DNA aptima and the RBD target interaction. Our collaborator, on the other hand, has developed an automated um, in silico modeling workflow that allows tertiary structure simulation of the DNA aptima and supplements the already um, uh, obtained experimental data on target binding interactions. In the end, we hope that this simulation will support the existing technique to provide an in-depth assessment of target, uh, aptima target interactions and promote rational aptima-based biosensor design. I'll be happy to discuss this further with anyone who's interested. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we're on to the last um, speaker, um, Martin Volek. Um, if you'd like to talk to your slides and the last one in person. Okay, so hello, everybody. I'm so sorry because I'm the last person who keeps you here before the lunch but I try to be really quick. 
So my talk will be about biochemical specificity of G quadruplexes. And as you have already heard, G quadruplexes are non-canonical DNA nucleic acid structures. And basic element of G quadruplex is planar guanine tetrad. And if several G guanine tetrads are stuck on each other, they create the characteristic box-shaped structure of G quadruplex. And G quadruplex are often found in the promoter or telomeric region, and they play widespread biochemical roles. And our main question was, what determines this biochemical specificity? And if it's possible, at least to some extent, determine the specificity by the primary sequence of the G quadruplex. So what we did, we take the reference G quadruplex sequence, mutated different part of the sequence and prepared nearly 500 membered library of this reference G quadruplex. And we have tested this sequence for five biochemical functions. And after analyzing this data set, we ended up with a model there where by simple mutation, it's possible to obtain sequence, which is specific for one function, but not for the other. But often these functions are overlapping. So if you'd like to know more, you can visit my poster or I will be happy to answer your question in the chat room. Thank you.